Welcome back to the Freezing Bear channel. I'm back in the Freezing Bear office. I paid the rent again, so now they've allowed me back in. Today's video is gonna be about dollar store nostalgia. Pew pews, pew pew pew, dollar store guns. Everybody just calm down. The cap guns, the dart guns. We're gonna go back 15 years when Freezing Bear was 10 and have a look at the cool things you could buy from the dollar store and then compare it to what you can get now. So when I was 10, I was lucky enough to have a pretty decent allowance, at least for a 10 year old, it was probably like 10 bucks a week or something like that, but it was like, whoo. I am a flush with cash. Every week we would drive to another town to do our grocery shopping. And beside the grocery store was this huge dollar store, which I always loved going into. While my mom was doing the grocery shopping, I would go down the dollar store toy aisle and look at all the cool cap guns and other dart guns you could buy. And because of that, I was able to amass quite the collection of them. So let's just go through some of the ones I had and you know, kind of talk a bit about them. So I'm pretty sure this was the first set I ever owned these two pistols here. And instead of them being in the black and gray color, they were in that green camo color. They all came with these darts that had that little rubber tip to them that would stick on a window or something like that. As dart guns, these guns sucked. Like they could shoot the dart maybe two feet. They were significantly worse than anything Nerf made, but considering the price, it makes complete sense considering this set could be bought for a dollar. But I never bought these with the intent of using them as dart guns. I liked them just because of how cool they looked because they were based off of real life guns. Whereas Nerf guns are just kind of like made up kind of futuristic looking things. 10 year old me wanted the realism and boy was I willing to pay for it. It wasn't long after I got the pistols that I was like, hey, I want something bigger and I want something better and cooler. And that is when I bought the AK-47. To load the spring, you pumped the gun. It was like a pump action AK-47, which isn't a thing, but it was really cool. I remember paying $7 for the AK-47. Pretty much every one of these guns could be bought for less than $15. So most of them I could buy with one week's allowance. But if I saved for two weeks, I could buy any of them. I felt like I was on top of the world. I felt like I could do anything I wanted. And the best thing was, is my mom wasn't like super keen on me buying these, but when she was in the grocery store, she wasn't there to say I couldn't buy them. So that's why I did it, you know? She didn't really care that I was buying them. It was more kind of like, are you sure you want to spend like most of your allowance money on this? The message was more like, why don't you just wait a little bit longer and see if you can save up like $50 and then you can buy a Lego set or something like that. The next gun I got was the MP40. It was so cool, it had a folding stock. For those of you wondering the size of these, they were about like roughly two feet long, most of them. They were a lot smaller than the actual guns they were based off of, but that didn't matter for 10 year old me, I didn't care. I mean, for seven bucks, what's not to like? Then I made my biggest purchase yet. I bought the $15 M60 machine gun. This was the coolest one. I had my eyes on this one since day one, but looking at that $15 price tag was like, oof, you know, that's a lot. That's a big commitment, you know? Then because I had watched Forrest Gump and they had that Vietnam War scene and they were all using like the M16s, I wanted to get one too. So that was the next gun I bought. After that, I went and bought the MP5 which came in all black, you know, it didn't come in the camo color, so it was even more realistic looking. The charging handle was actually how you loaded it too. It wasn't in some weird spot. It even came with a detachable stock. It was just the coolest one. If you had this one, you knew what was up. There was also a lot of Uzi style dart guns, but for some reason I never bought one and they just didn't really cut it. So along with buying these dart shooting guns, I also heavily invested in cap guns too. When you decided you wanted to buy a cap gun at the dollar store, you were met with a dilemma. Do I buy one that looks really cool or do I buy one that actually works when I pull the trigger and actually manages to fire the caps? My favorite looking ones were these 1911 style guns. You could buy them in gold and you could buy them in silver and all these other cool colors. So like it was, they were the coolest looking. So for only 250, you could be like your favorite drug lord or gangster with just that really cool looking 1911. But the main problem with this cap gun was his actual ability to fire caps. You know, it sucked at shooting caps. Like for some reason, like the plastic firing mechanism on it just was terrible and it would misfire like 50% of the time. This gun took those ringed caps that had eight shots in them. So to load this gun, you'd press a button on the side of it and the middle part would kind of flip out and that would be where you loaded in the caps. That mechanism was terrible. It only lasted about two weeks before it couldn't click back down again. It just kept popping back up. So you'd have to like tape it down. 
because for some reason, like the mechanism that clipped that piece back in would like always fail. It was just like 100% of the time it's gonna fail. So in terms of looks, we're talking S tier, but in terms of actual performance shooting caps, it's F tier. Probably by far the most consistent cap guns were these small black little revolvers. These, you know, everybody had some of these, like my friends had tons of these, you know, it was just like everybody I knew owned at least a couple of these because they were super cheap. You could buy them for a dollar. They are pretty effective at firing the caps. Like you wouldn't get that many misfires. These could also fire BBs, which was pretty cool. So they were multi-use as well. There was also slightly larger caps you could buy that had 12 shots on them. And there was this one revolver that took those and that was like my favorite. It just looked so cool. It wasn't super great at firing them, but just the looks again were really great. So like, it seems like if the gun looked really good, most of the time it was a pretty crappy cap gun. <laughs> it's just like, that's the way it was. There was also these weird dart guns here. They were terrible, you know, they sucked. Like these rubber darts were just beyond terrible. Just like absolutely no good. However, there was one way to get a gun that looked cool, but also functioned well was to get a metal cap gun. Those guns like were way more reliable for firing the caps because that little pin that hit the caps was made out of metal instead of plastic. So it just had more force. I had one of these little revolvers like this. I think it cost me about $8. So buying one of these little guns was a lot of money. It was expensive, you know? They weren't, they weren't your go-to because you're like, oof, eight bucks for one of these little pistols? I got quite a lot of use out of it until I think the trigger mechanism broke. So like the, the pin didn't really cock back properly. And then also the handle started cracking too. So none of these like were really built to last, but you know, I still got a lot of fun out of it. I remember this revolver being pretty good because where you inserted the caps, it was metal. So even though the whole rest of the gun was plastic, like the caps were sitting on metal, which made it more effective firing the caps. My brother and I would play this game where we'd have to like, one person would have to get to the other side of the yard and then there'd be one person like trying to stop them and you had like three lives and if you got fired a cap at you, you know, that would be one life gone. So yeah, there's a lot of fun games we played with these. I can't quite remember, but I think it was a revolver, but one of them, if you got close to somebody and fired the cap, it would actually like shoot a bunch of like that, I don't know, the powder out from it. It would actually like kind of hurt. So of course we thought that was really fun and would actually try to go as close as we could and shoot them at each other because it was really fun how the debris shot out. Some of the cap guns would have covers that would stop stuff from getting shot out, but these ones didn't, so. Or did we take them off? They might've had a cap on them that I think we might've taken it off. Yeah, I don't think that was by design. We just like took it off and was kind of like, oh, oh, look at this, you know? Probably not how they were intended to be used. We were smart enough not to shoot each other in the face, but that was about it. <laughs> this was the golden age of dollar store toy guns. You know, there was just so much to choose from. And then every week when you'd go in there, there'd be something new that you could get. And it was just very exciting. One that I really liked was they had all these tiny little guns. They were like keychains, but they could also fire a cap too but they were like super small and they had like a lot of different types. I collected so many of them. To fire those, you need to buy some of the yellow single shot caps where you can just like detach one of the little pieces. You could also get these like cap bombs where you'd put one of those single shot caps on the tip of it and then drop it onto concrete and it would make the bang from the cap. Those are really fun too. I had one of those. But it's crazy how things have changed because out of all the guns I've talked about, there's only one here you can still buy. And that's the little revolver. It was weird because when I was at the store, they had those guns for sale, but they didn't have any caps to go with them. So it's kind of weird. You could buy the gun, but you couldn't use it as a cap gun. And this thing now, if you want to buy it, is going to set you back $5. So if everything was five times the price, that means that if they were selling the M60 now, it would cost you $75. For $75, you could buy some pretty decent Nerf guns. So I don't think you could ever charge $75 for any of these. I think it just shows how crazy inflation's gotten. So comment down below if you can still buy these in your area because I'm interested if they're still selling these. So there we go, we're gonna end the video here. If you did enjoy this video, please subscribe. And if you haven't, why not check out some of my other videos I've made on early 2000s nostalgia. Whoa.